This week on Summer Screen, we take a look at Saturday Snow, a mole invasion, and the Teacher of the Year nominees. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, January 29th, and your Silver Screen Report starts now. Although last Saturday's snow didn't stick around for long, it still caused cancellations and delays. Here's some more information about how it affected students and school events. A few snowflakes fell last Saturday, which caused several events to get delayed and canceled. Not only did this cancel events, but it also affected athletes as well. For practice, it made it a lot harder because the fields were soaking wet and it was icy cold. We would have definitely had to wear more layers, make sure we stayed warm to keep our muscles from cramping up. Friday didn't, didn't have a major impact. Um, having said that, we did have a dance competition that was supposed to be um, that we were hosting here Saturday morning. Um, that event had to be rescheduled to Sunday, which actually impacted um, basketball practices and things like that because we're in the middle of basketball season. So we had to postpone our um, dance competition from Saturday to Sunday. We had 19 teams scheduled to come in all throughout the South Carolina area, including Spartanburg, um, Lancaster County, and then we had some in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. So because they had gotten hit the hardest, we had to postpone it. We were thinking that we would just delay it to Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, um, but we were trying to get as many teams to come to get here safely. The chance of snow this winter seems slim, but with high hopes, it is possible. I think we'll have a better chance of getting snow later in February, because that's when we normally get snow. So hopefully we do. I actually don't think it's going to happen this year. I really don't. I know that everybody's talking about, you know, this is going to be the wettest, coldest winter ever, but I don't think we're going to get it. I just, I don't feel like we're going to get it. Um, the, the weather has been really kind of crazy. Until we get to the end of February, there's still a chance. Um, usually February 1st of March is when we have our snow, so um, there's still a chance. Um, but, you know, we've already missed a lot of days this year due to the flood, so we're hoping we won't get any. But um, there is a chance that we will get some snow. This has been Sam Aaron with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT word of the week is defer, a verb meaning to postpone something or to yield to another's wisdom. Have you ever had trouble speaking in class? Yeah, I just get nervous. Well, you can take the class on public speaking to help you get over your nerves. China Wallace has more. Public speaking helps students come out of their shell and speak in public without being nervous. You learn how to feel more confident in front of an audience as well as learning how to be able to project your voice so the entire class can hear you. Like how to speak publicly like and not be afraid about like speaking in front of other people. Doing public speaking is, is just that. They, they, um, they publicly speak, right? And so what we do is we get them in there. They learn to get, get over that fear of speaking in front of their peers. Um, they learn how to plan a speech, um, prepare for a speech, to give a speech. Um, and it really just gets them up in front of their peers to, to hopefully become more comfortable in front of their, um, in front of their peers um, because they're going to need that you know, as they progress through school and their, and their careers. Class prepares students for their futures by being able to speak in public or when applying for a job. Well, you know, students can use this here at school. They can, they can use the, you know, the skills and the confidence that they gain um, as they go through high school in other classes whenever they have to present or whenever they have to speak or communicate. Students are encouraged to sign up for public speaking. I'd recommend this course to anybody because it's always good to be able to go up and speak like if you're doing a presentation in class and stuff. I recommend this course to anybody. It can, it's a fun class. I would recommend this course to any student in high school. This has been China Walls with your Silver Screen Report. Students in L.A. Martin's chemistry classes are using art and creativity to show off their element-inspired mold projects. Here's Zayna Dill with the story. L.A. Martin's chemistry classes have been working harder in their mold projects. I really like this particular project because um, it's an opportunity for the students to really showcase a different side, their creative side, their artistic side, which um, is a really important part of science and um, understanding how science works. I, I like being creative, and so creativity is just everything for me. 
Um, me and my friend were actually getting together to work on our mole project, so it's not only a good way to help us study and learn the material, but it's also a good way to help us bond as friends and really get together and work on our project. During the time that students work on their projects, they express the difficulties of making the project fit to the standards. To come together as one is something that's really challenging for me because I want everything to have sort of a balance and to make sense to not only just me, but my teacher and my classmates when I have to present. They have to spend time researching their element, uses for their element, where it's found, who found it. I think actually sewing the mold together would, it, that's a, the longest time to do. Sometimes we get in conversations about what they actually are doing if they're taking art and how they can incorporate that class with this particular project. It's, it's creative and fun and I, I love it. Miss Martin has favorite past projects and enjoys doing the mold project every year. Another one of my favorites was um, for silver and it is a, a stage um, with a, a group of people performing and um, you see different aspects of silver within the theme. This has been Zana Joe with your Silver Screen Report. With the semester beginning, it's always good to research your memory on rules and consequences. Yeah, let's go to Trey Martin with some tips about making good choices regarding conflicts at school. It's always good to have a reminder on what you should do in certain situations at school. We teamed up with Mr. Doty to show what conduct is and isn't acceptable in the halls of Dutch Fork. Hey man, I saw what you put on Twitter. You said that to my face. No! Uh, Don't you talk. Hey, hey, hey. Stop, 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 stop. What's going on? Hey, I was just on my phone and he just comes over here and starts finding me. Okay, but you can't do that. Regardless of whether you think it's your business on campus or not, you can't do that because it's going to cause a problem here at school. We're here to learn. Wow. I wish I could redo that. Uh, I don't know if I should send that. Thomas, you look great. Trey, I'm glad we can be friends. <laughs> hey, let me go cook this man up real quick. Boy! Don't roast me. What's on your feet? I'm just a boy. Bro, what are those? <laughs> hey, are you all right? Two guys over there, they roasted me. Before it escalates into something where you do something where you're going to get in trouble, you got to let one of the administrators or let a teacher or your guidance counselor know um, so that we can do something about it before it escalates. Guys, what's going on? Are you, you messing with the kid over there? No, nothing, so he's just upset for no reason? Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with him. Okay, let me make something clear. Bullying at school is a serious thing. It can cause a lot of issues for the people who are getting bullied, but it's also going to cause issues for you guys because bullying in school can lead to some school suspensions. So leave people alone. You guys are here to learn. You're here to get your education, not to participate in this kind of nonsense. Bro, we really hurt that dude's feelings, man. I wish I could redo that. Yeah, them kicks fire, bro. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, bro, I heard you were talking about my girlfriend. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Hey, stop, 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 stop. Guys, this is it. No more. You can't fight at all at school, all right? Any kind of physical competition like that, you guys are both out of school, all right? I don't care who started it. You participate in a fight on this campus, you're both going home. Got oh, it. man. I wish I could have redone that. Hey, bro, I heard you talking about my girlfriend. No, no, I would, I would never do that, man. Did you hear about the Teacher of the Year voting that took place this week? Yeah, I did. Here's Sarah Emily Rich with a look at all the nominees. Digital Integration Specialist Susan Applin has been at Dutch Fork for 19 years. She has taught English 1, 2, 4, Journalism, SAT Prep, bestsellers, public speaking, and has also been the yearbook advisor. This is Applin's third year being the digital integration specialist. Applin's visibility throughout the school makes her a widely used asset to the school. In my position, I have been at Dutch Fork a long time, so I know a lot of the teachers and have worked with most people in the building at some point. 
I also have the privilege in what I do now to be able to work with a lot of different teachers in classrooms and classes. So I, I'm in English classes, history classes, science classes, all kinds of different things. And I think it just gives me an opportunity to be a little more visible uh, and work with more people. Science teacher Susan Elvis has been at Dutch Fork for 14 years. Elvis has taught physical science, biology, freshman success, STEM courses, and medical terminology. Elvis currently teaches biology CP and honors. Elvis strives to help her students by teaching to the best of her abilities. That they, you know, take everything into consideration when dealing with a student, not just content knowledge, which is also very important, but also, you know, everything that a kid will bring to the table, if you will. That's why we have the job that we have. That's why we do what we do is to help students be more successful. English teacher Deborah Gascon has been at Dutch Fork for 17 years. She has taught English one, two, four, HSAP lab, journalism, and is also the yearbook advisor. Gascon currently teaches English 2, AP Lit, and advises yearbook. Her role as both English teacher and yearbook advisor make her a valuable asset to the school. Number one passion, because if you hate your job, your students can tell. And if you hate what you're teaching, they can tell. So number one, absolutely passion and love what you do. And even though they drive you crazy, to love them. The reason why I'm the yearbook advisor is because Ms. Medlock told me she was going on a trip to Disney World to um, a conference and that I want to go to Disney World. And I stupidly said, absolutely, I want to go to Disney World. And then um, 16 years later, I'm still advising the yearbook because of a trip to Disney World. Social studies teacher Allie Hendrick has been at Dutch Fort for four years. She has taught geography, government, economics, and current issues. She currently teaches human geography, government, macro, and microeconomics. Hendrick's ability to engage provides a connection with students unlike any other teacher. I've always been accused of being very high energy. I, I teach dance part-time too, and so I'm always moving around, and so I think that maybe in a classroom I'm engaging to, to most students, and I really try to connect with students on a one-to-one -one level to try to find what in, it matters to me, what interests them, and because I think if you find what interests them, then they're more likely to listen to you. It's the respect goes both ways, and I think that once you've got a kid's respect, they're willing to listen to you and they're willing to, to learn from you, and I think that's important. English teacher Carol Jackson has been at Dutch Fork for 22 years. She has taught English 1, 2, and 4, public speaking, journalism, and was the newspaper advisor for four years. Jackson currently teaches AP Lit and Teacher Cadets. A moment that Jackson will never forget was on September 11th, 2001. Probably the most memorable moment was 9-11. My class was a class of seniors in uh, English 4, and my classroom was on the back hallway near the cafeteria. And right before we were to go to lunch, one of the media specialists came in and told us to turn on the TV. We watched this live on television and then the bell rang for my students to go to lunch. Many of them didn't want to go, many of them you know, did go, but when they came back they had clearly been talking and they came back changed. Learning strategies teacher Lori Lee has been at Dutch Fork for 13 years. She currently teaches effective education and social skills and has taught those courses ever since she came to Dutch Fork. Lee works with students and teachers closely to provide a suitable teaching environment. Um, I work really closely with a lot of teachers, try to help collaborate. I try really hard to work as best I can with the students that I've got. I give everything I've got when I come to school. English teacher Catherine Meborn has been at Dutch Fork for 10 years. She has taught English 1, 2, and AP Lit. She currently teaches English 2 CP and Honors and AP Lit. The relationships that Mewborn makes with her students makes for an enjoyable class experience. I think kids really respond to um, teachers who are passionate about what they teach and who approach it with a sense of humor but who can also show students realistically why what they're teaching should matter to them. I have really good relationships with my students uh, most of the time and try to relate to them the best way that I can. Congratulations, Ms. Applin, on becoming the 2016-2017 Teacher of the Year. This has been Sarah Emily Risch with your Silver Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students about what makes a good candidate for Teacher of the Year. Enthusiasm, being nice in general, and maybe just fun. They should have, like, 
kind and willing to help people. A good teacher of the year is somebody that gets involved with their students. Like, they don't just teach in the most basic way. They, they come up with fun ideas and activities and they don't go through the same thing every day. A teacher should put the students before their needs. So like staying after school and just helping any way possible. The second annual Dutch Fork Be A Fan 5K starts in front of the stadium tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. In addition to the race, there will also be a scavenger hunt for kids 10 and under and a costume contest for all participants. Packet pickup is today until 7 p.m. at Fleet Feet on Lake Murray Boulevard. Go to www.runhard.org fan to register online or email Kimberly Taylor at sc.rr.com for more details. And now for some announcements. The Literary Magazine needs your submissions. Email your original poetry, short stories, plays, and artwork to dflitmag at gmail.com. The Litmag staff would also love for you to join. Meetings are on Thursdays after school in room 252. See Ms. Medlock Green for more information. Foursquare Club meets Mondays and Wednesdays after school in room 208. Here's Maddie with more. Thanks, Sam. Chess Club meets Tuesdays and Wednesdays after school in the Media Center until 5. Ms. Sheely is encouraging students to register for 3D Studio Concentration. See her in room 246 for more info and for an application. Mark your calendars. The interest meeting for next year's newspaper, yearbook, and silver screen staffs will be held Thursday, February 4th at 345. Listen to the announcements for more information. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. God, I know. It's like miles away and I'm blind. <laughs> This man really fell asleep operating in the camera. <laughs> that would be me. Because otherwise, I could not read. I think I, I legitimately think I need glasses. Did you hear? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I gotta like, I gotta, like think about it. <laughs> I gotta. All right, just one second. I gotta like think about something weird.